morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Capitol. Many of you have never left the Capitol, I know, but hopefully we will be providing you with a, a lot of a lot of stuff to cover here in the coming days and weeks. And we're going to start off with highlighting one of the major pieces of our jobs agenda for this session. And we believe that it is very important to do all that we can at the state level to get people back to work. We know the construction industry has been particularly hard hit right now. Uh, we have a lot of folks that are either on reduced time or just flat out of work. And the bill that Senator Langseth and Representative Hausman, the chairs of the Capital Investment Committees, respectively Senate and House, are going to highlight for you today, are going to put thousands of Minnesotans back to work. We think it's an important piece of legislation. It partners very nicely with, uh, in the House, the 10-point plan that we released last week on taxes. And then it'll also go together with reform in the economic development area. So I'm going to let them talk a little bit about what we are up to. And I know there'll be some questions about timing and all of that. But welcome back to the Capitol. Senator? Well, I am going to have my bill hopefully passed out of committee uh, at 2 o'clock today, and I will have a news conference with some of the details. So I'm not coming up with the details now, but some of the points I want to make. The uh, Tax Foundation has got Minnesota ranked 42nd in the United States in per capita state debt. I like being low, but do we have to be 42nd? We could be 40th, maybe. Uh, we are one of seven states that have a AAA bond rating. Our interest rates, as I understand, are somewhere around 3.5%. The bids are coming in for building at 15 to 20% below normal. There's a sale going on out there, and this is the time to bond and build. The oversimplification is, how can you do this when you don't have money? In a very business-like way, if you look at this, the time to bond and build is during the down times, when you get your best deals, when you put people to work that aren't normally working. So we are moving early. We hope to. Uh, go early enough so they can get the bids out and get uh, going uh, as soon as the frost is out. I will see you again this afternoon. And the House um, was going to uh, stay right here after this press conference, and we discovered the Senate Rules Committee is meeting in this room, so we're going to have to move upstairs. Uh, the House spreadsheet will be available for you, and we can talk through that as soon as we um, leave this room. Um, the Pawlenty administration has written new debt service guidelines. Uh, the bills that Senator Langseth and I are presenting today are well under those debt service guidelines. So we are presenting a responsible bill, a fiscally responsible bill. We are also presenting a bill um, that reflects that we're one Minnesota and that we invest all over the state. We invest in regional economies. We think that's um, a good thing for the state. But as always, we focus on a few priorities. Higher education is always at the top. Uh, we know that in this state, we take seriously preparing the workforce of the future. And you will see that reflected in the bill. Wastewater infrastructure is invisible and yet essential for business and industry uh, to grow. Um, that's especially true in a town like Litchfield or Wilmer, where the size of that uh, or the condition may prevent a business from uh, developing. I would focus on one reason why we're moving quickly. The one bright spot in a bad economy is that interest rates are low and bids are coming in low. And we hear this from everyone. And recently, I was asked to meet with the CEOs of all the engineering firms across the state. Uh, they were willing to come to my district. And they asked, what could they do? And they tell real stories about how state investment keeps their businesses going. And they're a little afraid that there won't be that state investment. So the one bright spot in a bad economy, low interest rates, low bids coming in, means this month, if we move quickly on this bill, the taxpayer dollar goes further. We can get more for our money if we do it now, if we're aggressive about it and timely about it. And I would add, um, selfishly, that this bill should stand alone and not either be used as leverage in other debates 
uh, or be delayed till the end of the session when some of those other debates have played out. There's a reason, a sound reason, uh, to keep this bill separate, to move it quickly. Once that bill is passed, there's a lot of work that has to be done. And while that work is going on, the rest of the business can be conducted here at the state legislature. Thanks. All right. Questions? Is the bill over or under a billion? Way under, way under. <laughs> I think ours is thirty-seven dollars under. <laughs> we did um, this whole leadership team uh, met some time ago, and we made some agreements early. We made an agreement on the size of the bill and the timeline of the bill. Um, the Senate uh, will move uh, a little bit uh, uh, more quickly. We have a few more, a uh, few more committees to go through in the House. So we're a bit delayed. And, and I'll just add that this is based on the word that the governor gave to Senator Pogamiller, myself, Representative Sertich, and Senator Clark when we went in to meet with him, that he knew that there would be some differences, but his preference was that we move quickly at that time. And so that's what we've been working under, and that's what we're going to keep working under here, is the fact that a lot of Minnesotans are out of work. We have a very good situation on interest rate, and we have a very good situation on bids coming in under where people have even expected. I, I think just one other I, part of the agreement between the House and Senate, too, is we think the bills are going to be roughly 90 percent in agreement, give or, give or take a percent. Uh, so the idea is, is that whatever the differences are, it'll be a very quick conference committee, and we our intent is to get this to the governor's desk. Uh, in a very orderly and uh, timely. timely fashion. One thing the governor said yesterday and, and Republican leadership as well, they were pointing to this statistic from Tom Stinson saying each job uh, costs $100,000 and, and that they were um, you know, saying that the bonding bill was at times more costly than it was beneficial. Um, um, there's, a, there's a certain amount of humor uh, behind that because they forget that we're constructing things there is a huge cost to all of the materials, uh, whether it's steel or lumber or whatever, but that too somewhere is generating jobs. And what we're discovering across the state is people understand that when they build a project, they have an obligation to that ripple effect. And when we toured the state and when we got to Duluth, we didn't ask for this, uh, but the people uh, who were underway building uh, the deck handed us a sheet and it showed all of the contractors they used from all over the state of Minnesota and I think they were saying to us in a powerful way we too realize when the state partners with us that we have an obligation to the rest of the state um, to uh, employ other people so that hundred thousand dollars goes for a lot of material that builds those buildings well, also, it doesn't include the spinoff that comes from, from those jobs that normally people wouldn't be working, are working, and that spinoff creates a whole lot more than one job per 100000 Any estimation as to how many jobs this bill could create? No, I, I, don't, I don't know, but that 100000 figure is just, he's picking out the direct construction jobs. He isn't talking anything about the spinoff that occurs uh, this summer uh, because of, of people working that aren't working. I, 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 would just, I would just say that someone who's making $100,000 should have a little more sensitivity to someone who's not working at all. Senator Langston, we're going to get a chance to see your bill before you pass it. You'll see it the same time everybody else sees it. I mean, you're not privileged characters, are you? <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were. <laughs> so, Doug, I want to guarantee I'm going to see it about the same time you see it. <laughs> this session to previous sessions in terms of politics you've got the deficit you've got an early bonding bill how tough is it going to be how different is it going to be elections uh, let's not be surprised that there are politics happening at the state capitol. That happens every year. But what's different this year is twofold. Number one, we're going to be working as quickly and efficiently as possible. And number two, our major agenda for the first few months of session will be jobs in the economy. Uh, you'll be seeing a legislature led by Democrats working faster and more efficient than possible and then ever before. And so, uh, but as far as uh, politics at the capitol and those sorts of issues, um, that's always here. That's always been here since long before any of us in the room were here. So that, that's nothing different. Have and you, have you gotten any kind of concessions from unions and some of the construction work? And if not, where are these 
did Lord Van Sanders come from? Well, we just know that uh, from looking at other public bids that have gone out and private bid costs. You know, I know that uh, I had recently met with an architect who was telling me about a project that was just approved at my alma mater at Gustavus and that the bid cost, and that's a private project, no public money in it, and the Board of Trustees just approved it, but it came in like 10 percent below the bid cost that they expected. So we have evidence all across the state, private and public projects. I mean, there's no, we don't, we don't deal with uh, taking these bids in or anything like that. That's not our job. Our job is to set the overall policy for the state, investment across the state, investment in regional centers, and be able to supply the money that's going to then go out. And certainly in some cases it's the Department of Finance who will be dealing with these bids. In other cases, other local units of government. But that's not what we do. Are you I think I just want to point out that the, everybody is for a bonding bill. The governor's for a bonding bill. And uh, we just think it should be a little bigger than he thinks. And in our private discussions, he said this is a fine process to work on. I'll just line item some items and make it a little smaller. And I, that can work. And I think we ought to do that and then move on because it's important to meet the spring construction season. And so I don't anticipate a big problem here unless somebody creates one because uh, we're moving quickly. The governor has told us privately that he will you know, downsize it or right size it a little. Fine, we disagree with that. But uh, you know, he's the decider, so we can't really fix that. All we can do is get him our work as quickly as possible, he and we, in, we intend to do that. Line. He said he might take the whole bill that, down. That's not what he's told us privately. I, I would be very surprised, because that's not, that has not been the tone of the discussions. I, uh, I, I don't anticipate that. I'd like to invite you to comment yeah. on the state's cash flow problems, and especially whether the cash flow issue could actually mm -hmm. slow down the beginning of some of this construction this spring. We have lots of work to do at the beginning of this okay. session, and that is one of them. And I have to tell you, unlike Washington, we have to pass a balanced budget. We know that. That is absolutely one of the tasks. The, the issue about bonding is from the time you pass a bill till the time the money is out there, there's a lot of work that has to go on. Were we to, to delay all of that, then we just put those projects much further out and we risk losing a whole construction season. So one of the arguments for doing this early is all of that other work that has to take place once the bill is passed with all of those projects around the state is that can go on while this other discussion is going on. Um, I wanted to just say one word about um, the debate that will happen in the next few days about the difference between 685 or 725 or a billion. We'll spend a lot of time debating that. And so I went to my fiscal analyst. At the time, we were looking at a bonding bill of $725 million because that's what is figured into the forecast that all of you have been talking about. And I asked her, um, what is the difference between a bonding bill of $725 and a billion? How much more debt service do we have to acknowledge on the spreadsheet in the next few years? In 2010, she said zero. In 2011, she said 2.5 million. In 2012, she said 9.7 million. That's the difference between those bills. That's how much you can do, and that's the significance of a bonding bill. So, it's a good point that if the governor thinks that vetoing an entire bill over something that's zero or 2.5 million dollars is a good idea for the Minnesotans who are out of work, I think that is a little bit of a disconnect from the lives that people are living today in this state with one of the highest rates of unemployment, especially in the construction sector. And so, you know, we're going to, again, take the governor at his word that he's going to work with us. Uh, like Senator Pogmiller said, no one is disputing the need for a capital investment bill this year. How fast do you have to pass it to get it? How fast do you have to pass it to get the construction season started? And um, what kind of discussions are you going to be having with his office or his people while you work on this? I'll use a Minsky building as an example. Were we to pass the bill in February, they tell us it would take about 90 days 
for that whole bid letting process. That tells us they can still take full advantage of the construction season. So it gives you an example in one sector uh, what, why we are focusing uh, so specifically on this, on this month. On the bonding bill as early as because it's easier than fixing the budget. You're having a major task this year. Oh, no, that's... we have to wait for the February forecast. Was the governor right when he said that because certain um, people are running for <coughs> office that you cannot really do a compromise before the April state conventions? I'm looking at you, Speaker. Well, I think he's speaking for himself. He's the one that's <laughs> running for office. <laughs> Marty, did you have something? Yes, Speaker, a lot of this is centered around construction jobs. What do you say to Minnesotans who aren't involved in construction but still yeah. out of work? Um, you know, I, I think that is a very important question to talk about. Um, there are some people who think somehow we are focused only on the trades. Mm -hmm. When I met with those CEOs of the engineering companies, um, uh, they said, uh, the line usually is when the trades are working, everybody is working. And they said to me, before the trades can work, the engineers have to work. And of course, before that, the architects have to work. And they, even uh, and even, even lawyers, lawyers. <laughs> and other designers. Um, so I think it's, um, you know, to think that we're focusing on one uh, portion, uh, one sector of the workforce, I think, misunderstands. The question earlier was, um, why are these low bids coming in? That's the reality of our economy. Some of these businesses are just trying to keep their company afloat. Um, over the Christmas holidays, an architect approached me and said one science building in St. Cloud had kept his business afloat for a year and a half. I mean, these are people giving us real experiences of what it means when the state invests in some of those regions. And, and, Mar yeah, hold on a second. I, and Marty, I think the other thing that partners with this are things like the 10-point tax plan, because the investment of angel investor credit, the state doing something on that, will bring private dollars into the state. Those are not just construction jobs. Those are also jobs that are clean tech jobs, bioscience jobs that are good paying jobs for the long term in the state. So there are a number of things being focused on. I think that you know we obviously are going to also watch what's happening in Washington on their jobs package. It looks like they're picking up an idea that Minnesota used before and that is this idea of a bit of a wage subsidy. And what we're hearing from economists right now is that hiring in Minnesota is likely to pick up late in this year, early next year. The idea there is if you can spur picking up that hiring six months earlier, seven months earlier, and make a commitment towards keeping people hired, that's going to have a real effect. And that is not just about construction jobs. The one other point I should make in terms of dollars, um, though the bill um, has some state dollars on the table, uh, there are three other ways that that leverage is funding. One is federal money, and you see that throughout the bill. Uh, whether it's restoring wetlands or an airport in Duluth, there are huge federal dollars at stake. Another is local investment. Uh, when we um, invest in some of these regions, the, the local governments are also making a significant uh, investment. And finally, private dollars, philanthropy. Uh, that parts of this bill match. So uh, though we pass a bill with one uh, dollar amount, it leverages money in at least three other ways. Have we seen any buy-in from uh, your Republican colleagues on, on these bills? In the Senate, we always have buy-in of the Republicans. Normally, they, they have over half their over half their caucus that will vote for them. And mm -hmm. I always put, I look at the projects, and if I would put it in for a Democratic senator, I put it in for a Republican senator, and they know that. And uh, there's always been pretty good feeling. There's always some that aren't going to vote for it, uh, no matter what. I would just like to go back to this um, contractors. I've talked to contractors who say, during downtimes, they just want to keep their crews going. They don't want to make any money. One uh, guy said to me, "I don't even figure depreciation on my equipment when." the downtimes are. He's actually doing it somewhat below a cost. I had an electrical a contractor who was a neighbor. Well, he, he did the bidding for electrical contractor. He said, when you have all these bids coming in, somebody makes a mistake on the low side. He said, many of these bids come in below cost. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. So, we need to yeah, have a rules yeah. committee meeting. Great. So. I'd sort of be remiss. I know there's questions about bonding, of course, and, and the and the economy, um, but the stadium it's it's looming. What is the take on this? And especially, we heard the governor float a few ideas yesterday. Where does this topic fit in with the discussion this session? Um, I think the governor, if he has some ideas, he needs to proceed with them and ask for uh, cooperation in the legislature, and I think he would get it. But I think there's no way that that can proceed without the governor taking the lead. And if he is willing to do that, I'm, at least on the Senate side, we're willing to talk about it. But um, so if he, I, I thought what he said yesterday was I have ideas, but I'm not proposing anything. I think he needs to propose something. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. And we'll uh, head upstairs. <laughs>